Hey guys, thanks for listening to The Cynical Nerd. Please keep in mind that we do not avoid spoilers for any of our topics, whether they are current or past media. Listen at your own risk. Tell me, tell me about it. Tell I, I, me about so, it. I am, I am like, I'm stoked. I don't know where this came from, but all of a sudden I got like jazzed. And it's a good thing to be yeah. like Jazz is dieting good. and working, dieting and working out like hardcore. I'm just like, I'm fucking into it. I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, I, I can't wait. You, to, feel, like, I'm, you I'm, feel the, the, the excitement at the prospect of working, feeling healthier. Right, right. That's what it is. It's like it's like I I somehow reversed the cosmos and now I'm well that's not true I didn't reverse it. I'm not saying alcohol no longer gives me the dopamine drip I so hardly <laughs> crave. Uh, I'm just saying I I don't know what happened like over the weekend it like I was just like oh I I know how good I how much better I feel like just in yeah. general and and you feel healthier you feel better you feel more energized all the time. And like looking forward to that feeling. And also like, let's be real. Let's be real. You do a light, like 30 minute cardio. You're not getting a lot out of it. You're getting a little bit out of it. Not that many calories. It's great for your heart, obviously. uh, And and your body in general. But it it just makes you feel good about yourself. You probably was going to say like you feel good about yourself afterwards, which is worth like a million dollars. I I feel like. Of course, anybody can, in theory, be like, I know I should get in shape. That's the easy part. But I feel like, <laughs> for me anyway, I just sort of have to wait around for the drive. Like, I can't force myself to, like, all right, I'm going to do it. It's just one day I'm like, all right, this today is the day, and I'm doing it, and it's happening. Um, yeah. I did join the gym today, so I'm also yeah, I'm also whoop, whoop. ramping up. I'm, I'm running up that hill, Kate Bush. Um, <laughs> and uh yeah, so my first day back at work. I'm gonna hijack your story. You're done now. I'm going. Uh first day back I, I physically was in the office. Okay. <laughs> Post surgery. I'm okay with this. It uh it went a lot better than I thought. I have this like anxiety about being the center of attention. Like that's why I hate my birthday. This is not a joke. I hate my birthday because everybody calls you. And they're like, it's all oh, about okay. you. I'm like, oh my god, can we talk about something else? That's yeah. why I'm horrified of uh, my wedding day, Veronica and I feel exactly the same way. Like everybody's just looking at the two of you. What a nightmare. Um, so I thought like yeah, everybody gonna, was going to be in my binoculars. ass all day. Right. I'll just stare at you. <laughs> or even worse, like just this. stand next to us, like really close. Yeah. Uh, but no, people were just like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I feel pretty good. And they were like, I'm going to leave you alone for the rest of the day. And I was like, this is, this is a great <laughs> deal. I loved it. This is everything I, I I've hoped been for. having a pretty good day. Right, right, right. So it's, you know, it's, it's going, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird because like when you eat like shit, this is all common sense. When you eat like shit and when you drink at the time, like while you're doing it, it's the best thing in the world. It feels better than being in shape. Like, like no doubt about it. It feels better. But like the other 23 hours of the day. It's just fucking awful. So it really does feel good oh, to yeah. finally get over it and go like, I need, I need that. I need that long distance Cumminsies. That's what I need now. Yeah. I don't need these short range Cumminsies. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Here. I, uh, like I, I'm hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm working from home tomorrow and I was like, uh, Oh, it's like, it's going to be like 50 out tomorrow where we are, which is crazy. Cause it was very, very cold last weekend. And I was yeah. like, oh, maybe I'll take like a, maybe I'll go outside and have a nice little jog on my lunch break. Like I'm looking forward to uh, making good choices and which is, is mm-hmm. in and of itself a good dopamine trip. I, I'm going to hijack our normal diet and exercise conversation that we seem to fall back to all the time and give you another um, cliche, yeah. a go to, which is stories about kids. OK, this literally right. just happened to me and I have to tell you. You know, make sure no one's around. <laughs> I always uh, love the look over the shoulder. <laughs> he every once in a while, he's my son's four. He'll just go on a tangent. It'll it'll right. Daddy, what's this? Daddy, what's this? So he starts asking me. He's like, Daddy, um, you know, how did how are how are dogs related to wolves? Because I think I've said the statement of like they're cousins before or something. Right. And and he was like, he was like, Daddy, 
how do wolves bite so hard? And I explained jaw muscles and daddy, how do wolves run so fast? And then he says, daddy, why do wolves howl at the moon? And I ask Google because I don't know. And it turns out it's a myth. They don't howl at the moon. It's just a thing on TV they perpetrate. It's like it's just a social call on for hunting and stuff. Yeah. And then he goes, <laughs> he goes, it's so it's, it's me, Grace and Samantha's right on the other side of him. So I can see her clearly. And he turns to me, he's like, daddy. Why did God give the wolf like strong teeth and jaws? And Samantha's behind him going, yeah, daddy, how? <laughs> because she knows that I do not think I think that's a fairy tale. Um, she was having a really good time watching. And eventually I literally I was like, oh, your mother's going to have to answer that one. I, I can't do this one for you. <laughs> You're just passing uh, it back and forth like a beach ball. Yeah, I'm just passing the buck. You tell him about that, because I don't... I literally, I, it, you know, talking about wolves, I had two of them inside of me, and one of them's like, <laughs> rip the band-aid off now. Dude, and it's, the other it's, one's like, it's it tough, though. It there, is, there's yeah. like a moral, like... It's, I, I'm not there with my kid, of course, because he's not even talking yet, but... Like, uh, my niece is nine, 10 years old and my family's religious and like my, my parents have custody of her. So of course they get the final say, but when she's like, um, are we going to see like when the dogs died, like, are we going to see Oliver and Frankie in heaven? And I just have to like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to see him there. I can't be like, well, heaven doesn't exist. They're just in the ground rotting. They're just skeletons of the dogs that they used to be. And then once you I'm die, you, you just it up. cease you might to be sit down for this one. Yeah. <laughs> When Things are actually when, when, sadder when, even than you think they are. <laughs> yeah, why don't you sit crisscross applesauce and let me ruin your day? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, obviously I'm not going to do that, but I did opt to just not yeah. answer the question because uh, right. my mother uh, tells him things. Uh, and sometimes he'll see it on his iPad. They'll watch, he'll watch a video and they'll mention something and he'll be like, oh, because yeah. to him, that's a Bible. That That's uh, no pun intended. Uh, you know, those videos are all real. so. Right. Yeah. So I, I keep creeping over, waiting for him to. Uh, he's sick again. I do. It's a, it's a fucking yeah. joke at this point. It's a joke. He's con every other week. Every other week he was good for like a week. He's sick again. Yeah. Now we're going through that with Odin too. He has like I, he had the ENT ap appointment that I was talking about a couple weeks ago, and right, right, uh, right. apparently they looked in his ears and they were like, "Motherfucker, his head is full of water." <laughs> he just has oh. like that's just a, a thing. Some kids like they. Uh, uh, the doctor didn't actually say that. Let me just be clear. Um, he has a lot of, you know, fluid in his ears. Some kids with like tiny passageways, just like it just happens. And so they got to put tubies in there. They got to put a little straw in there, drain out the and fluid. What does, okay. That drains the fluid. Okay. And, yeah. then, and then the tubes come back out, right? Is it something super, that super common like... procedure? It, they, they just come out okay. eventually. Like they, you, you follow with them. I think like every couple of months and one day they look in there and they go up, oh, they must've fallen out and that's it. Um, yeah. but yeah, he has like, like severe hearing loss. We had an audiology appointment for him a couple weeks ago and they were like, yeah, he can't hear unless you're yelling. <laughs> so he just has fluid. He's got tiny little ears. Oh, so. so he wasn't being an asshole. He was not ignoring you when you told him to stop, uh, throwing the remote across the room. He was <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He had, he had a legitimate reason. He walked by me. Like, I still right, savagely beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> With the remote. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Uh, Disclaimer. Right just kidding. I promise that I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right before we start episode 92. That's a big one. I have to ask one key question. Uh, what platform are you going to get? I hate trans people on the video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to make a job. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. For anyone listening. It's really a hot living, debate right now. If you have been living under a fucking rock, Hogwarts Legacy comes out, early access tomorrow, game comes out Friday. Uh, it is a big, yeah, it's a big deal. I don't know if I, I, you put the IGN review in there. Do you see on Twitter, they got like assaulted on Twitter for the review and then issued another statement about the community. I didn't get to read that. Listen, we're not no, waiting into I the politics. Get, I didn't get, yeah. Uh, that's not what this, if you were looking for that conversation, you're at the wrong, uh, podcast, you, uh, took the wrong turn, um, yeah. and ended up here somehow where we're two middle-aged liberal guys who just like to play games. Um, yeah. anyway, 
Let's get into the news. I got stuff to talk about. I want to, I want to talk to you. No, about no, no, no. You asked me a question. I want to know your answer. What are you thinking? Which way are you leaning? Oh. PS5 or PC? No. <laughs> I don't even want to. Just, just so we're clear the decision is, I'm the talking about. The discourse has gotten so bad around this. I don't even want to tell people I'm fucking buying it. I'm like right. ashamed that I want to buy a game. Yeah. Well, and then it this is done, and then there's going to be 10 days of being shamed about Atomic Heart. That's coming next. Like, this is going to come out, boom, on to the next thing. Oh. Yeah. Right. So just get ready. Yeah, Pack you're, it in. You're, it's February, baby. It's cold outside. The, you're paying for the bombing of Kiev every time you buy a copy of Atomic Heart. Right, I think right. it's what the saying has the saying goes. Like, I, just to be clear, yeah. I'm not advocating for or against. I'm just making jokes about uh, the subject because yeah. that's what we do. We make really bad jokes and um, make up sponsors. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to the KGB for this week's sponsor. And, uh, you know, Jesus that's Christ. what we do. <laughs> the disbanded KGB disbanded. They're still out there. Yeah. They're watching. They 100% did. Uh, yeah, we, so we don't, we don't actually have, like, a, a full, like, docket of trailers. A lot, a lot of times we have a lot of trailers and stuff to go mm. over. Uh, we're actually really light on that stuff this week, which is fine. We did a two-hour episode last week. We'll have a shorter jaunt this week. This week's a lot more yeah. week in review stuff to talk about. Uh, two trailers, and then we have three, not one, not two, not three. All right, I have to finish it. But four stones. What am I going to do with an empty case? I had to quote Fifth Element. Uh, we have <laughs> our main topics this week are Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Superman yeah. vs. the Elite, <laughs> the animated film. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of my favorite quotes in that movie. And The Last of Us episode, Quattro, which is four. In English, I was. What, you might have yeah. been confused. It's also a type of razor blade I, that you can get. It's true. Well, the the quattro has chic four quattro, blades. Maybe. Yeah, the chic <laughs> quattro. Thanks that's to the sponsor this that, week. That's not. Sure. <laughs> thanks for the sponsor. That's not really a sponsor. Okay, moving yeah. on. We we talked about a lot of DC stuff last week, uh, and this is just like an add on to that. It, it came out right afterwards. This is very quick. I promise we don't have a ton of DC stuff this week. Uh, James Mangold, who you might know, directed Logan, is in talks, apparently, mm. according to The Hollywood Reporter, to tackle the Swamp Thing movie for James Gunn. Uh, I think that's great news. There's nothing else to go off of here. This is just yeah. it. He's in talks, apparently, to do the movie. He's a good director. Obviously, we both have very fond memories of the film Logan. Uh, I think he does good work. And I would be uh, very happy if they started to get really good directors in on the DC stuff and really yeah. made them feel unique and give them all a, 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 a vision, if you will. A vision. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, until you, you know, more, what can you really say? But all, all I have to say about this is uh, concerning Logan, you had brought up um, and it made me think of it when I was watching Superman versus the elite, a run of comics where Superman is like dying, like he ages and like, and I want to read that. I want to, I want to get into that. Um, there's something about the whole like dying superhero who was formerly immortal that is just a cool setting. I don't know what it is, so I want it. No, it's I want to cool, eat man. more up of it. Eat more up of it, and I would recommend reading the All Star Superman run. They made an animated film, but I they changed a couple of things in it, and I, I don't think they're for the better. I'm not oh, saying I didn't even know it was an animation. I thought it was just a I thought it was just a comic. Yeah, comic view. It is. It is. It is. It is. Okay. I, I don't think the animation is bad. I just think the comic is better. So if you're gonna right. do one, I think you you know comic for sure. Um, yeah, Man Gold's a good director. Cool. Like I don't have anything else to say about this besides yes, mm -hmm. yes, please, sir. Uh, please, sir. Nice I'd daddy. like some more. Yeah, my name's Oliver Twist. <laughs> and Gunn and Saffron are hosting the orphanage that I live at. And they gave us a feast last week. And this week I'm back to begging for scraps. So that's where we are. I'm back, you know, and my analogies are back to being shit too. Here I am, twisting. <laughs> All right, moving from DC to Star Wars. Star Wars Visions, that really cool um, Animatrix-esque season mm -hmm. that happened uh, last year that we had very fond thoughts about a couple of the episodes, not the whole, the whole, look, the whole thing was not roses for me, but like yeah. two or three of those episodes were really fucking cool. Uh, season two is coming out in May, right around May the 4th, I believe, which they always really shit around that date. Yeah. Um, whatever. <laughs> feel the way, feel whatever way you will about that. It'll be nine animated shorts uh, from a lot of, 
from what I can tell, pretty reputable studios. I'm not a huge anime fan, so I don't know. Did you read through this? Did you see like the uh, the various studios? That I actually are I didn't, and now I'm curious if Studio Trigger is doing another one because uh, they really just have not missed in ten years. Um, I do know that I'm very excited about this. I thought th- I thought season one or whatever you would call it. I don't know. The first collection was really dope. You're right. Like some of them were less than others. Um, I don't yeah. think any of them were really bad, but like some were exceptional and, and like three exceptional episodes for the price of four or five mid ones is like, I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to pay that price. Um, yeah. But no, I'm trying to skim it now to see. I guess I could just search. I don't see, see Trigger in the studios yeah, list. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Something called Trigger Fish. Trigger Fish. I'm also getting the same. But uh, in any but event, they have no, some... I absolutely would love to watch it. I thought it was cool. The kind of anthological nature of it. Different, um, different studios so you can kind of like put their own sort of spin on it. I thought it was great and I'm happy they're doing more. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. They released some stills from some of the, and they just, they look really cool. So hopefully, you know, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I think it'll be, I think it'll be a gooch time. Uh, the opening episode of that season one was really cool. I think you and Scott didn't like that one, but I did. That was like the samurai one. It was very like Kurosawa. No, I did like inspired. that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And then there keep was them, the brother and sister. Them... That was Dark Studio Side Trigger one. one. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That was very cool. Quite I did, good. Did... Quite good. <clears throat> it did pull me out of it a little bit when they're like floating in space outside the Death Star or the Star Destroyer. Like, uh, no, like breathing mechanism whatsoever. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> space wizards and light swords. So what are you going to do? Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, I lied. We have one more piece of DC news. If I was a better host, I would have put these together. <laughs> 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 there was uh, after this DC slate got announced. There was a little bit of what would I call this? Hmm, hubbub, maybe mm, a kerfuffle, if you will. Mm. Ooh, intriguing. <laughs> I hate the name kerfuffle. Quite the word about, selection. Th- thank you, thank you. People speculating about if the DC universe moving forward is going to be bad news for voice actors specifically animation voice actors because if you recall peter uh saffron and james gunn were talking about unifying actors in roles across media uh same actor who voices something in creature commandos for example would reprise the role live action uh etc etc in video games if they were to make a video game and a lot of people said hang on Cause that means you're about to take a lot of jobs away from people. Like mm-hmm. there's a whole world of people who Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, they don't do anything live action. You know, you, you would be missing yeah. out on potentially that kind of talent. Uh, they, they even brought up the fact that in the life of a, of a, a VA, a voice actor for animation who will be on a project and run lines like a hundred, a hundred, they'll run a line like a hundred times to get the right way. And like, They'll have all this time set aside to do all these line readings, et cetera, uh, especially for video games, all the different types of like side uh, conversations, et cetera, that these bigger actors, if they were to do this, just wouldn't have that kind of bandwidth and the quality yeah. of the project might suffer because of it. And these are all great points. And I don't know the answer. I, I do know the only rebuttal that came was James Gunn saying that, well, we're not just doing these DC universe related animation films there will be like he said elseworlds uh content in animation there will be elseworlds content in video games we're still gonna like let people make something with these properties but we are going to have interconnected versions of those things that do tie in Mm -hmm. which in my mind like i would say like 70 percent of the way alleviates the problem i still feel like there's going to be a little bit of an issue but we are also talking about one studio one stable of characters, they'll find other jobs. Sorry, that's a shitty thing to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's away. like I, I, <laughs> I don't have a dog in the race. I don't watch like I don't watch these. And something I'm going to get into later is that that's something I want to correct. I've always wanted to get into the DC movies a little bit, uh, animated movies a little bit more. I think I've been saying that as long as I've been on the show. Um, I just never with my like, heart. the bandit off and do it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, Quit uh, so like, <laughs> despite that, I know it's a dick move to just go like, we have new people and you people who've been doing this for a decade or more, uh, dedicated to these characters, you know, you're out. That's kind of a shitty thing to do. Um, but, but again, like, I just don't feel the full weight of it. I'm not like, oh, Jim Schmimborm isn't going to voice Glopso man anymore. Like, I just, you know what I mean? Like, I get that it's shitty, but like, I just, I can't really like be that upset about it because I'm just not a part of that world. I, I can't uh, empathize is what I'm saying. I'm having difficulty yeah. empathizing is what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm having yeah, a real hard know. time empathizing with Glop Show Man or whatever you fucking yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chips Hazard Hands. <laughs> um. <laughs> haggard Hands. Get it right. Haggard Haggard. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Chips. What a throwback. Mr. Oh God. Okay, <laughs> moving on. I <laughs> was actually thinking about removing this article from the doc, but I didn't because uh, we're light on news this week. <laughs> yeah, why not? The, Let's just talk about yeah, it. Yeah, fuck it. There's going to be a movie coming out. I know, big surprise. It features a lot of people that I like. Octavia Spencer, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Lucy mm-hmm. Liu. And I got to tell you, the main reason I threw this article in here is because I read this title. I'm going to read it to you now. And, and after I read it, so you can form your own mental opinion, I want to then tell you what the title made me think of. And that's why I yeah, clicked on the it article. It made us think of the same thing. It, <laughs> entirely. Okay. Okay. So the title is Octavia Spencer, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Lucy Liu to star in Blacklist script, Nobody, Nothing, Nowhere for Beasts of the Southern Wild producers. Pa- pause the podcast. I want you to pause, formulate your answer. Come back, hit play. I immediately thought this was supposed to be like like a like a, a teen high school movie or scary movie. Knock on everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> I was like, "What are they making fun of that movie? Is this supposed to be like not another teen movie's version of that?" Uh, apparently not. It's not mentioned in this article yeah. anywhere. It's just a really closely tied together film name with a lot of cool yeah. people in it. I what just thought say? it was a sequel. <laughs> that, oh, okay. So maybe I didn't think as 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 a uh, uh, pinpoint Close. on on yeah. on your brainiology there, but I just thought it was a sequel to it or in some way related to it. Thank you. Uh, the, but uh, listen, yeah, the, no, I, good. We got a lot of a lot of good talent. A lot of lot of apparently they were talking about some of the other things that they've. Uh, there is a producer from Everything Everywhere on here, I think, uh, working on this. So a lot of talent in the film. I, yeah, uh, you know, I hope it does good. Not a whole lot of news. Do you, yeah. Do you, do you, yeah, we're a little light bear with us this week. Do you think that this, <laughs> this guy who worked on everything everywhere all at once when he got the script thought it was a joke? Right. <laughs> or did he throw it out there? That's what his, like his pitch for the title of, of everything everywhere. And said, no, he's like, all right, I'm going to give it one more shot. My man's got hardcore <laughs> imposter syndrome and he's like, I'll never do anything else as good as that again. Wait, let me think of a title. Ah, uh, nothing, nowhere, no, nothing, nobody, whatever. <laughs> Look, it sounds like it could be cool. I clicked on the article yeah. for completely silly reasons and was disapp- I walked away disappointed thinking I uh, yeah. was going to have something funny and it just didn't work out in my favor. Yeah, you're just being a little goose. Uh, a little silly bear. As, as my son would say, you silly goose. Okay. <laughs> Boys and girls, children of all ages, we have to, well, maybe the wrong time to say that. We have to get into a very serious conversation about AI. Yeah, I feel like every other get weird. <laughs> yeah, about to get weird. I feel like every other week lately, we've had some weird story about like a VTuber AI saying something it shouldn't have. Right. Or I, I just, I feel like it's been more and more common lately. And okay, so a couple things happened. First, this happened earlier in the week. Uh, Neurosama, or oh, sorry, not correct. Uh, there's an AI generated channel on Twitch called Nothing Forever, or at least, as you'll come to find out, there was an AI channel on Twitch called Nothing Forever. And it was an AI powered Seinfeld knockoff. So the, the AI is basically generating the scenes and the dialogue live it's just making a show based off of i i assume uh hours and hours of being force-fed seinfeld the poor ai <laughs> i'm sorry i know a lot of people love that show i just never got into it 
Um, as does tend to happen with all AI, the internet tries its heart. Like the only reason these channels are popular is because the, everyone likes to watch a, a car wreck. So everybody is watching this, waiting for it to say some shit that it's not supposed to say. Yeah. And that happened. There, there was a couple days there. This happened earlier in the week last week. So I, we pulled it up at work and we're laughing at it because the, the jokes are so disjointed. And sometimes they'll just say, hey, I'm leaving. And then like the audience laugh will play like in really weird places. <laughs> It's goofy. I it's wish eclectic. I knew about this before it got taken down. It sounds like, I don't know, just sounds up my alley. Sans it's, all the, it's... you know, bad shit that they got <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me finish the story before you say you're... Oh, no. What platform are you buying? <laughs> oh, of course, like a <laughs> so... <laughs> so this AI-generated Seinfeld-loving show... Uh, eventually was hit by the Twitch ban hammer for saying some terribly transphobic statements. And they're, they're, you can find the clip if, if you really want to. I will not say exactly what they said because it's, it is pretty garbage. Uh, but it, as with anything, eventually this machine uh, eats its own tail, becomes an Ourobo Ouroboros? Or is that Ouroboros? Something like that. Ouroboros, One of us is yeah, sure. right. I'm sure. One of us is right, and I have a good feeling it's me. <laughs> and uh, the, the, they fucking got the band hammer. It, it, this happened with, uh, was it Neurosama was the other one I had mm -hmm. mentioned. And I had mentioned that because earlier in the week before this happened, we were getting to a point where Neurosama, which is an AI generated VTuber that got in, that we talked about a couple weeks ago because it got in trouble for it was basically it basically got tricked by the chat because this Neurosama bot actually talks to people and shit like that. It got tricked by chat into basically saying it wasn't sure if the Holocaust happened, yeah. like really ugly shit. This one is different. The the person who manages Neurosama quickly put in blocks so that those those things could not be brought up again. The channel's live again. It was just a strike on the channel. But it got to a point where Neurosama decided to do reaction content to this AI Seinfeld show. So you have AI watching AI with thousands of people gobbling it up because they're waiting for a fucking calamity to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, like they're waiting for Skynet, but just with really bad, badly colored jokes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that didn't happen. I guess Neurosama watched it and nothing horrible happened. And then it went on to spout some shit on the Seinfeld show. Though my whole point is it's, it just feels incredible. Like the, I was thinking about it when I put the article in and I went, holy shit. I remember when the first, I, I know I'm dating myself and I get it. Boomer. Oh no. Boomer problems. I remember when the iPhone came out and everybody was like, whoa, yeah, there's a touch, there's a touch phone. And I touch, this is kind of like a, like a strike of lightning. I don't know what you would call it. Not really. It's a crazy coincidence is all. That's all it was. Uh, Grayson was playing with shit and you know how kids get into things. He finds an old, I wish I had it up here as like a prop to show you like show and tell. He, he found Samantha's old white iPhone and I forget what generation it is, but the thing compared to my current phone feels like a child's toy. It's very tiny. It's, it's the one that was like a flat on the, it wasn't the curved bag. Yeah. It was two, two tones silver. And there was like a bar on each end and it's, it's, it, it's so fucking tiny. It's, it's like a phone made for a baby. Like it, it's, it's like, it's like this fucking compared to my monster fucking phone yeah. now. And I was like, wow, like I remember when the first touch phone came out and everybody flipped the fuck out and everybody got everybody. You didn't have one. You were a poor kid. Haha, <laughs> look at the pores. Oh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, they, they got they got bigger screens and, and bigger screens and faster. And now I'm 35 and talking about AI watching AI and getting banned on it. It's just crazy. That's all I'm, I'm, t I'm having it. This is a boomer. Or Boris no, it really of a conversation. It is that's a great episode title, by the way. It is uh, um, the Boomer or yeah, and just go show a fat guy that looks like Carl from Aqua Teen eating his own ass or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> no <laughs> thumbnails and titles can't be related. Uh, uh, no, I dude, I agree. Like I've always um, uh, obviously we grew up in like the explosive age of technology. Um, like we were still using fucking tape recorders when we were like single digit and now there's all this crazy shit going on. And so like my thing was always growing up is I always told myself, 
I never want to be. I hated when my parents would act like Satan was in my phone or something or like, oh, the 5G symbols are making people vote Democrat or something like all that shit always sounded so ridiculous <laughs> to me. I'm like, all right, I, 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 I just I always want to be current with technology. I, I, I like as much as I can keep up with it. That's what I'm going to do. And then I realized that, like, that's what everybody has said throughout all of history. But there's just a certain point where it kind of gets away from you. There, there's a certain you point. You stop caring about it. You yeah. stop caring. And then all of a sudden, like a couple years later, something insane like AI that can learn from like me talking to it is talking back to me and we're having a conversation. And I have to say, I've always hated technophobes. But it does freak me out. Like it's like it's weird to me. Like it's a bizarre thing that a TV show can write itself and and animate itself. Like how fucking weird is that? Live. It's very weird. on the fucking spot. Um, it doesn't do a very good job. Of it. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> but like even remember AI art just a couple years ago, people laughed at how fucking inaccurate it was, and look at it now. Like it looks incredible. There's a TV show coming out on Netflix. Uh, they had a, uh, this animation studio in Japan had like a worker shortage. And so all their characters, like they animated, but the background art is all AI art because like, that's how they got around the worker shortage. And it's like, that's it's crazy. just getting fucking weird, man. Like, and I don't want to be like, oh, fire bad, unga boogum, but like AI shit <laughs> kind of fucking weirds me out. Anyway, I want to look up uh, the, the non Holocaust denying uh, episodes of this show. Hopefully they're archived somewhere and watch it. I don't know. Just that weird disjointed type shit is kind of funny to me. But usually that it's funny to me when it's written by a human being like Tim and Eric, that kind of stuff is funny. Yeah. It might genuinely terrify me to watch that, which just makes me want to watch it more. It's very disjointed. Like there's no through line. It's it's scene to scene. To, <laughs> and to, to, to its credit, it does look. What happened? <laughs> no, I just I just just, I just thinking oh, okay. of it just sounds hilarious. Y you spooked me because I thought you saw Grayson and I didn't see him. <laughs> and I was like. Is he about to scare the fuck out of me? Um, yeah, it's just this, it's like every every image you'll go. Yeah, that looks like it looks like it watched a, an episode of Seinfeld, but right. like none of it makes any sense. It is weird. If you can find some of it that's not talking uh, about bad things, then you should definitely do that. Yeah, the non Kanye West directed episodes. You just got to avoid <laughs> yeah. those. Weed those out. There's just oh, some true no. gold in there. Okay. Uh, this is actually our last new week in review uh, piece of news, and then we're going to have two trailers and we're going to spend some, some time on the main topics and uh, that's going to be it. So you might get a shorter sewed out of us this week, but this is almost just like an informational thing for all you, uh, all you cats and kittens out there listening. Uh, <laughs> the last of us episode five is actually not coming out Sunday this week. It's coming out Friday and they're doing that. Because of the thing you might have heard of called the Super Bowl. It's going to be on Sunday. And HBO just said, yeah, we're not fucking with that. No one fucks with nothing else wins that night. Yeah. Nothing else is watched more. It's just, a, we're, you know, America. Um, so it, the, to uh, ignore that and, and sidestep it entirely, it'll be coming out uh, February 10th, 9 p.m. Same thing. And it'll be going back to its regular time slot. Literally, all I wanted to say was... That it's, it's 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 as much an announcement for you guys as it is for me telling yeah. Derek when it comes out, and which is cool because you know. now we get it a couple of days early. I saw someone who had uh, one of my like annoyingly patriotic friends. There's nothing wrong with being patriotic, but some people just go way too fucking far with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he was like, "You love your country, but yeah, <laughs> but come on, come on, um, but come on." He uh, he's like, "Here's my proposition for the most American holiday ever: just put oh, super no. Super Bowl Sunday right before President's Day." So that you can drink for Super Bowl Sunday and then you have off for President's Day. And I was like, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I can't I can't I don't don't agree with most of your ideas, Sold. but that's a pretty Sold. good one. Logic yeah. tracks there. But uh, yeah, I mean, no, good it, news. It, if I didn't have a baby coming way sooner than I'm dude, I can't reminding fucking myself of. believe when I said that Last of Us got delayed and you were like, oh, baby two is going to be here by then. I was like, holy fucking shit. I like keep thinking that shit's like six months away. I don't know. <laughs> Blink of an eye. Blink of an Holy eye. Holy shit. That is insane. Yeah. For, for those listening, if you've been uh, not listening in the past few episodes, my wife is very pregnant at this point. And uh, yeah, it felt like it went by incredibly quick. And I, not to sidetrack our, well, we were done with Last of Us. That was just, okay. So yeah. this is basically the segue, the segue, if you will, <laughs> before the trailers. 
before the, the trailers we're the gonna siege. talk about. I uh yeah, I we were talking about it and I'm like, holy shit, it just flew by this time. And I it, there's really two reasons. One, we have a kid to take care of now. We did not have this child the first time. So it really gives this continuity of like life goes on. Like he's still gotta get to school yeah. or this week he's sick. I've got to go to work. Um, and we didn't, we don't really have that. Like when she was pregnant the first time, it's just us. It's really a great time. If you look back on it, it's mm-hmm. just the two of you just kind of soaking it in, you know, having a good time together before that first kid comes, you're nervous, you're anxious, but it's a fun time. You're really looking yeah. forward to it. And we don't have that this time. Life is just fucking churning. We can't, you know, now I understand why people feel like time goes faster and faster. The older they get It's because you, you fall into these routines and before you know it, it's the end of the week and you're having another, you know, you're like, yeah. Oh shit, that was six weeks ago. But yeah, so she, she just had an appointment Wednesday. She's 31 weeks now and they're going to induce her again at 37. Like they did for Grayson. So we're six weeks out, baby. We're talking crazy mid Mar- mid to late March. This kid's going to come and try to Bogart my fucking birthday, uh, which is March 20th, yeah. which I'm not okay with. I'm protesting this entire <laughs> situation. It's really, it's my cum's fault. That's really my, <laughs> yeah. my cum's. That's who you have to blame You had here. to work. You had to work that time. You couldn't have waited another month. It's really, it's selfish of them if you think about it. Yeah. I do have a friend who has the same <laughs> birthday as his daughter. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, know. that sucks ass. right? <laughs> I mean, they're inducing her. So like, couldn't I request it? Right. <laughs> Like six, six weeks from now is like March 15th. My birthday is the 20th. Can I be like, let's give it a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, if it's like, you know, like, let's move this along. Let's get this done before the 20th, please. Yeah. The, the only, the only uh, thing we're unsure of is how long it'll take to induce. In, I feel so bad that she has to get induced again. It was a nightmare the first time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Dude, not, I am I'm, so grateful that I was born a man. Holy fucking shit. That is nightmare town.com. Fucking awful. Yeah. And all you can hey, do is sit put- there and be an <laughs> asshole. I'm here, honey. I'm here. That's all you <laughs> yeah, can do. I'm feeling tired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't sleep I've to- last I've- night. It was hard for yeah, me to sleep I've- through your screams. <laughs> the couch here isn't very comfortable. It hurt my back. <laughs> We've talked about this. I, th- they I think really like are on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've, t- we've talked about this on the podcast. I don't want to retread too much old territory. But yeah, Fair, I, I yeah. thought. I felt god awful. The first, I mean, yeah. they're like, "Hey, uh, Samantha, we're gonna stick this balloon in your pussy to blow it yeah. up, and it's gonna be real. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be real painful, and you're gonna have to be like this for like twelve hours." And I'm over on the couch, and I'm like, "Can I help? Can I do anything? Do you want me to blow in the balloon? Can I? Is that my part?" Uh, no, I felt absolutely terrible for her, you just and I feel you, useless. You, yeah, there really, there really is a helplessness to it because I can't help. I can't share that pain with her all i can do is try to make her comfortable and then yeah i felt guilty i we had been up i you know we got there at like an 8 p.m check-in and we're up super late and she's having contractions but like they're they're just far enough apart that she can't sleep but they're nowhere near close enough yet yeah and she's just awake and she's just got to live in that shit and it sucks and i'm like i'm tired i'm tired i've been up for 17 (laughs) hours i gotta get my beauty rest you guys did the whole, like, after he was born, you did that psychotic thing we did, too, right? Where, like, you guys were only sleeping, like, an hour a night for three weeks. Uh, we were, like, we crazy actually, with that. We we started to take shifts. Yeah. Uh, because I, I wasn't. After a couple of weeks, we did, too. Yeah. Uh, I I was like, I, okay, look, I am I am crazy psychotic about this because it's a newborn baby and I'm scared. But I'm also so tired that at this point. I almost don't care if you if he went to an orphanage so I could sleep for a night, um, just a night. I'd want him back the next day. I'd feel really well, yeah, bad yeah. about it, you know. Um, Call CPS so they take him just overnight. We'll yeah. get you know get some yeah. rest. Go get him in the morning. Well, the the even more psychotic part is uh, so we we decided to do that, and I, basically because I'm already a night person, I was for like a week. I just I would grab him, and at like eight o'clock, I'd be like, "Hun, go get some sleep." And I would take him next to the computer and I couldn't sleep while I was up with him because I would I was just too nervous. And I would just sit on my computer all night, I'd play games, and he would be in next to me in his little rocker and I would feed him yeah. and check on him. Yeah, we did the he'd same go thing. Back to, yeah. He'd he'd go back to sleep. I would play games until like six o'clock in the five, six o'clock in the morning, sometimes earlier. Sam would take back over and I would go sleep for like six or seven hours and get up mm-hmm. and we would do the same thing. The psychotic part was that 
Whereas if I wasn't actively watching him, I had no trouble falling asleep. She could not. So yeah. even when I was up with him, I would go check on her and she would be awake and i'm like what are you doing she's like i can't sleep i like i can't see him it's freaking me out she had a really tough time with it and uh i you know i couldn't i couldn't like i couldn't i was i was like i'm gonna force feed you ambien like go to sleep yeah uh it didn't work it was the same way yeah but i would sit there at my computer just watching youtube he was right here sleeping fucking taking shits on me and stuff it was great i i I love it i mean it was horrible because i was like literally like on my last fucking strand of consciousness, like strung out bloodshot eyes, like wide open like this, but, uh, still somehow a good memory. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. Okay. Enough of that. <laughs> Look at that fucking dad talk. <laughs> but you talking about uh, this episode shit. is literally is the boomer or a board. We just got done talking about AI watching itself <laughs> and how we don't get it. And now we told stories about our pregnant wives and they were like, really shucks, dead. I love my son, though. <laughs> yeah, that little whippersnapper asked me about God today. Okay. All right, we only have two trailers for you. Got them, too. Uh, and the first one's not even really a trailer. It's a gameplay walkthrough, but it's for something that I am stoked about. Uh, we've talked about this before. The Resident Evil 4 remake they did a an exclusive walkthrough of chapter five of the game i gotta be honest i don't remember specific chapters of this game uh this game uh comes out uh, i don't know pretty soon i expected the about me to to tell me and it's not telling me and i'm excited about this game uh it looks it's a couple weeks it looks march, march it looks really well let's find out resident evil Four remake release date it's telling me march 24th that's pretty soon i'll have a baby by then i'm gonna keep doing that yeah. <laughs> it looks it looks really fun and they it looks like they I, I saw this and I also saw an interview with one of the devs and they were talking about things like uh things like the chainsaw villager, how iconic he was and how they were mm-hmm. they, initially they were gonna change his design a little bit, but then they realized that the the terror in the chainsaw villager is that he just looks like a normal dude with a chainsaw and you know they didn't want to make him too brutish and crazy because then he looks like a boss or a monster. Um just a really interesting conversations about like the things they decide to, you know, uh, to, to spruce up a bit and the things they want to leave super faithful. And some of the gameplay looked really cool and got me jazzed. I'm jazzed to play this game. I've really had a good time with the original. It was one of my favorite resident evils, I think. And it's all I really got. I just, this looked really cool and I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. No, it does. I never played the original, so I'm really excited. I, I'm, I, I would wager to say I'm more excited than you are because I never played it. I think I win this one in excitement. Um, <laughs> I think you do too. No, it looks like it has. Uh, it looks like it kind of is a mix of like um, the Resident Evil Two remake. That one, I, I don't like the whole like everybody says two was so perfect and then the three make was awful. I think that they were both fine games. I do think the second one was better. The second yeah. one was just clean. I don't know how to describe. I don't know like how to expand it. It just felt like everything felt so like there's no stuttering. It just ran great, played great. Three had a little more like hitches. Some stuff felt a little jankier. Two was just beautiful. This seems like it has that cleanness that two had, but with the sort yeah. of exploration that uh, uh, Village had. Um, I'm really pumped for this. I agree. It looks like a really fun. I I skimmed it. Like I only watched like uh, like a minute or two at a time at like three different points. Um, yeah, because some of this stuff again, I haven't played it. I kind of want to be surprised by it, right? Um, yeah, but uh, no, it looks good, looks well done, dude. Capcom has gotten their shit together in the past like ten years. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, so, oh, let's be real. <laughs> Getting their shit together means they've been pulling from that backlog pretty hard and just <laughs> remaking stuff. <laughs> but be this be fair, they're great. They've been really great. Yeah, uh, I. Two and three were both great. I, you know, I, I had the same complaint everybody does about three, which is that it was just too short. Mm-hmm. They did not even, whereas two, I think, included everything from Resident Evil 2, maybe some extra. I'm not 100% sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, three was shorter. They cut out some sequences some completely. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer that that happens. I, I know people who really enjoyed it, and I, it was a well-made game. It was still very fun. It's just super duper short. And it was a bummer for me. Um, but had a I'm, fucking I'm, great last boss fight. I will say that two's last boss yeah. fight pales in comparison to the last boss fight in three. Holy shit. 
when you shove the fucking laser thing in his mouth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sounds, sounds like my Saturday night. Okay, moving <laughs> on to our second and final trailer. And I only put this one in. Uh, do you remember how I asked you about this one? I said, have you ever seen the original White Man Can't Jump? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. said, you said once back in the 90s. And I said, great, that's perfect. Yeah. I'll put this in here. <laughs> They are making a White Man Can't Jump reboot. Now, I was curious if this was going to be a show. It's not. It's actually a movie uh, starring uh, Sinqua Walls and Jack Harlow, who I've seen before and I don't know what from. Again, completing the Boomer Ouroboros. I'm sure that everyone knows him is going to go, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, this is going to be on Hulu, but it's, it's, it's in a movie. And I got to say, uh, look, no one's going to be Harrelson and Snipes together because that movie is just a classic. Yeah. But the chemistry between these two was enjoyable enough that i immediately decided i would give us a shot and i'm not usually super into these kind of films now that i've gotten older uh, but i'm gonna watch it for sure and i just i thought i wanted my friend derek to see this and to get his thoughts on it yeah i remember essentially nothing about the original like it like it's been that long and it was like a one-time watch for me um yeah when this comes out we can do a back-to-back comparison i'll watch the og oh. and then this one give you my B2B, clean, if you will. uh non rose colored glasses thoughts on it see what it yeah. see what it do i like the speaking idea. of what? uh old franchises coming back they're talking about making a rush hour 4 and it's the only I thing in the world that i want i am a sucker for buddy cop movies and rush hour is like the cream of the fucking crop holy shit please what about shang what about shanghai noon did you like shanghai noon I don't even think I saw Shanghai Noon. Was that uh, Owen Wilson Owen, and Jackie wow. Chan or something? <laughs> wow. Can't believe you've seen that show. Wow. Yeah. Uh, sure Owen I Wilson and Jackie Chan. It's pretty fun. You should watch it. I mean, it, again, it's Oh, you know what? I've never seen ba- uh, Bad Boys 1 or 2. All right. And then I think oh, the third one. Oh, they're definitely enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're like good. They're, they're like They're like the one. Yeah. I got I to gotta do it. Even though I hate Will Smith. I hate him. It's understandable too. And oh, I'm man. starting to like the more and more I see from him, the more and more I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Derek was right. I'm going to meet him one day. But I can Derek feel was right about you. <laughs> he's going to be like, who get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> and he's going to smack you the way he smacked uh, Chris Rock. Oh, that's true. I don't want to watch out okay. for that guy. Watch out. Okay. Uh, that's it. We're going to talk about main topics now, but look, before we do, very quick, I've been. I, I got to get back in the groove of doing this up on Front Street because, uh, you know, if you're already listening, then you're already an avid listener, I guess. If you're still here, uh, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok at the Cynical Nerd. I haven't been posting TikTok content in a very long time. I promise I will be remedying that very soon. I have an idea for generating TikTok content easier. Mm. Uh, right now, it's a, I'm not I'm not trying to bitch and whine too much, but it's a little tedious to make TikTok clips from our existing media. Uh, anyway, yeah. that's all. Go follow us. Leave us a comment. Leave us a, leave us, send us an email. Tell us your, uh, tell us all of your thoughts. And, and I want to hear about your life story. Um, tell me about your first yeah. kiss. What was his or her all name? about it. Yeah. Were you and, and, uh, the kisser? Were you the kissy? Um, are you still with them? Did they have bad breath? Are you still together? Yeah. I doubt that. That feels like that's rare. But did they knows? give you know. bad breath? Yeah. Did they give you herpes? Please. Them. Could you imagine first time? Oof. Things yeah, are that, that's going to cause you, buddy. that's going to cause some kind of problem that requires therapy later in life for sure. Yeah. You're going to get but, less kisses throughout your life as a result of that kiss, I feel like. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a fair comment. I also have Nobody one wants more to kiss uh, visible herpes. <laughs> Speak if they're yourself. sort of not inflamed at the time, I can kind of turn a blind eye. But uh, listen, look everyone's got a everyone's got a fetish. Okay, you just well, as I'm saying this, don't <laughs> you don't know what anybody else out there likes. You know what I'm saying? It's true. Uh, yeah, I have one more housekeeping thing there. to cover before we move on, and that is uh, an apology, but an explanation of why. So we okay. our last episode went up pretty That's quickly. Interesting. Our our vod pod. AKA YouTube is still not up for last week. And that is because I ran into the single weirdest editing issue with Premiere Pro I have ever seen. I'm going to tell you a really, really quick snippet behind the technical curtain because no one's going to give a shit about this. 
I mix the audio version first, obviously, because then what I do is I make the the whatever the overlay for the video and the video template for Premiere basically looks like I dump in the audio file. I dump in the two video files. I sync the mouths up to the audio version, delete the video audio. So it's just the it's just the mixed podcast audio, both videos and whatever background Jones. So what I'm getting at here is the audio version came out fine. And, you know, it's 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 super easy. You have tracks, you drag and drop. So I pop open the video template, drag in all the videos and shit, drag and drop in the audio file. And I'm, I'm syncing it up. Everything looks good. What was it like? It was like the 40 minute mark. I know because I went back to it about 50 times right at the I skip around usually just to spot check things. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like I, I skipped towards the end and I audio. We were saying something completely different than what was happening on screen. And I'm like, what? How did this mm. fall out of sync? So I, go, I was also really high that night. So I was afraid <laughs> that I had done something. But I, I went back and looked at it the next day. It was not that. It was not that. But I, for a second, right. I was like, what did I? I was like, I'm too high for this. I have to go to bed now. <laughs> so I go back and look. The beginning of the video is fine. Somewhere along the line, it's desyncing. I find it. I track it down. At this one point in the audio file, it just starts playing from the beginning. Like we're mid sentence and all of a sudden weird. you start giving your spoiler disclaimer again and it just plays back through. So I'm like, I immediately run to the website, play the podcast, skip to the part where it's happening in the video. It sounds fine. It's not doing it in the audio version. And I'm like, I I'm dragging the file that I just listened to. That sounds perfect into premiere and in premiere it's doing this, but not when I play the file by itself. I have never had this issue happen before. I have no fucking idea. So my only, my only solution to this is that I'm going to delete the, the project entirely and start the template from scratch and see if it comes. And if it comes back, I have no idea that episode just won't go up on the, on the YouTube. Cause I've never had that issue before. I don't even know how it's possible. This sounds I don't like even... the, the, this, you know, in the horror movie, there's always the point where like the main character is like starting to snap and they're like talking to a friend. They're like, Oh, the, the video, it's, it, the, it starts over. I've never seen it happen. And their friend is like, listen, Hey, I think you need to take a break and just maybe you need to talk to someone, you know, like Derek, that part I can right show you right three. now. That's I will show way. you. Just come with me. <laughs> I can actually show you if you wanted to see it. Trust me. Trust um, me. Oh, I, I, w I wish I would drive to your place and you would play it and then it would be perfectly aligned throughout. Be like, Chris, are you OK, buddy? I would love that. What's what's going on with you? Bro, I'll screen share after the fucking podcast. I don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to scorched earth it. I'm going to I'm going to eat it into the nether. And try to build right. it from scratch. And if it doesn't work, Von then Delitas. that episode, that'll just be the only one that doesn't appear on YouTube. I don't know what else I would yeah. do at that point. Uh, anyway, moving on. Main topics this week. What do you want to start with? I like the odor it's in. Okay. Maybe okay. even like The Last of Us first. I feel like we could do The Last of Us first. That's, that feels like a little Because quickie. that's more of like, yeah. That's yeah. Hey. A little. Okay. Last of Us. <laughs> It was gross. Now that we have original sound for musicians turned on, I heard all the wetness in it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry if anyone out there has... Every uh, drip. <laughs> has one of those weird phobias where you hate to hear mouth noise because we probably just triggered right. the shit out of you. We just did a lot um, of it, yeah. The Last of Us Episode 4 taking place after the the saddest hour of television tm uh this one sees ellie and joel traveling they're now they're finally away from the east coast in the heart in the in the in the heart of the country the bread basket they get to kansas city and some shit goes down and we get to in the very end i know he says the spoiler disclaimer in the beginning but spoiler alert we get to see henry and sam uh which i'm very excited about their storyline see how they're going to, what kind of changes they're going to make to it. There's already s some very obvious changes in this new character. Uh, that's like the leader of these uh, bandits. Uh, I, I don't remember what her name is. I apologize, but she was Kathleen, not in the I game. Think. Kathleen. That is right. She was not in the game, but uh, her existence could be inferred. Like the bandits in that city, like are a thing. So, mm -hmm. Somebody's in charge of them. They just went and filled out who yeah. they were. Uh, 
I don't want to ramble too much. I want to have a, a nice back and forth about this. I really liked this episode. I was really hoping we've had a couple great episodes, but obviously the last one being predominantly a flashback about this lovely couple. There's not a lot of action uh, besides the bandits at the fence. And I wanted something fun and, and I got exactly what I wanted. We got some great banter moments between Joel and Ellie. Some of my favorite of the season so far. There's some cool emotional moments there where he makes Ellie look away. There's some cool stuff, but I'm blabbering. Uh, how did you feel about this week? What'd you like? What'd you hate? I uh, no, I thought it was good. I, I think the general consensus that everybody's saying, which is accurate is it's a, um, not, not a filler episode, but like a setup episode. There's just kind of some new concepts, some new like introductions to characters. And so it's not going to be the heaviest hitting episode, um, which was fine. I think that, like you said, it had some really, you know, you see the bond forming between Ellie and Joel a little bit more. She saves yeah. his life. He kind of realizes like, OK, if I, uh, you know, if if she would have listened to my directive and not taken any weapons, I'd be dead right now. Maybe I do need to trust her with a weapon. Um, yeah. She's, you know finally getting through to him with some of her humor. Um, and in the end, I thought Kathleen was a really, I always like um, villains quote unquote that are like believable. That seems like someone that could, I don't know, someone who's right. traumatized enough in a post-apocalyptic world. It almost feels like, you know, somebody like that in real life that you could see that happening to in a scenario like that. Um, yeah. And uh, no, it was good. It was a good episode. Um, I, th there's not a lot to say. It just, it sort of sets up the Sam and Henry chapter, which to me, right. It's weird for me to say that it's my favorite part of the game because of what happens, but I will say it, yeah. it's the part of the first game that affected me the most. Yeah. Um, the wrap up of that chapter, I had to, there's very few times I've had to do this in video games in my life, but I had to go like, whoa, and put my controller down and just like, sort of like take a breather for a couple minutes before I kept playing. Um, so I am happy to see them in it but I'm horrified of what's to come because it really yeah. fucks me up in the game. I imagine, you know, it's going to do so again in the show. No, it's a great episode. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. There's a lot of little stuff in here, but overall it, it is more of like a, okay, we're, it, we're just on the train riding down the tracks, enjoying the scenery. Uh, like you said, the, the advancement of Joel and Ellie's relationship, uh, she, th they ripped this straight from the game. She finds a joke book. And those moments are really endearing. I myself love a really poor joke. So I connected with this a lot. I thought it was really mm -hmm. sweet. Uh, she eventually gets him to crack. She makes him laugh. Uh, and there's also the obvious growing in uh, feelings for Ellie from Joel, the protective nature starting to kick in. Uh, they, they're out in the middle of nowhere camping that first night. And she says, do you think people can find us out here? And he, because he wants to make her feel calm, says no. And she rolls over and goes to bed and him, on the other hand, it wakes him up and he can't sleep. They actually show him in the middle of the night, just standing guard. He's just looking out into the forest, waiting for people. He's starting to form this really protective nature over Ellie. And I, you know, it's 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 heartbreaking because we know what that ultimately ends up forcing Joel to do in the end of this season. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought it was really cool. They're They're teasing the I think it's a bloater with the concrete all messed up in the basement of that yeah. building I f yeah so the, I, i'm assuming this next episode there's going to be some kind of big uh fun fight with that thing who knows what's going to happen it should be really cool uh and yeah the episode ends with them just finding a random skyscraper and going up as high as they can and uh she makes some joke about being an old man and he's like i'm 56 yeah <laughs> and uh I'm like, oh, I would have fell down after 10 stories. So good job for you. And yeah, they wake up to Henry and Sam. Oh, no laws. No, no laws. laws. When you're drinking the claws. Uh, okay, so that was Last of Us episode four. Now we have Superman versus the Elite Black Panther. You wanna, what do you want to end on? You want to do Black Panther? I think we should do Black Panther now. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right now. Okay. All right. Meow. I wrote down very small, very quaint notes because there's just a couple things I wanted to touch on. But I'm going to I'm going to do what we typically do, which is over our overarching thoughts. Uh, and then we can deep dive into stuff that uh, caught our attention. So overall. I like this movie. But I have like asterisks asterisks next to that statement, like I. 
I like this movie, but hang on, but wait. I like this movie, but there's still a couple things that it bothered me about. First and foremost, and I think I nailed down why this is. The CGI still felt bad to me in this one. And it was a problem in the first one. It was very noticeable in some scenes. And I figure it's a sequel. They're probably going to give them more money. And even if they didn't, Marvel works with like the same VFX studio groups over and over. And like they know how to make these movies look pretty good at this point. So I, I was expecting it to look a lot better. And it, I think it did overall. Uh, but there's a I, and I think I figured out why these couple scenes bug me. And they are specifically around Black Panther's CGI. And I think it's because they're animating an actual human. Like it's a skin tight suit. It's just kind of like movement feels completely fake. Like there's a couple. It's, it's hard to describe, but there's a couple scenes, especially towards the end, towards the final fight. When the camera's not super close, it's a little bit further back because they want to show these characters getting like thrown around or like jumping or something. And I'm just like, oh, that looks like super CGI. Like she looks like she weighs nothing. You know what I mean? Like really, yeah. it stood out to me so much so that I felt like I needed to bring it up. But uh, CGI was weird. I, I really liked the way they dealt with grief in this movie. I thought they did a really great job with uh, and holy shit Angela Bassett uh as the queen I thought did a fantastic mm -hmm. job I wasn't super sold on the actor who plays Shuri in some of her heavier emotional scenes I wasn't getting what I expected from her um I liked the movie it was a bit over long and as much as I like the character of Everett Ross he could have been cut out of this movie completely and I would never have even noticed Every time yeah. it cut away to his subplot, it felt like a, a waste of time. Uh, it felt like just a way to 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 remind you guys that uh, what's her name, Julie Marie Dreyfus, whatever is in yeah. this movie, and in this universe, hey, you're gonna see more of her. Remember, she was in some of those Disney Plus shows. She's a bit of a baddie. Uh, she's she's a bit of a loose cannon. Ooh, she recruited U.S. agent. <laughs> I don't know what to, it wasn't as good as I expected, but I did love parts of it. And I will get into those after I get your opinion and I will tell you what they are. How'd you feel? I thought it was a fine movie and it, like I, it wasn't like, it wasn't good to me. Like, and I don't know how, I don't really know how to qualify it. Like, I, I feel like if I saw this movie five, six years ago, I would have thought it was better than it is. And there, so there's mm. a part of it playing into it that's just like just it's not even necessarily the movie's fault all the time it's just like the, just the same narrative the same characters the same thing i mean like they've there's yeah. only 10 fast and furious movies and that's way too many there's three times as many marvel movies at some point it's just like jesus then again i went into this and and, and i really try to like these movies i do so i try to leave that shit back here but it is worth mentioning that there's a part of me that was like when they're like, again, like you said, like, oh, remember this character? I'm kind of like, just like, ugh. like, can we just like do the movie without doing the interconnected shit like constantly? Um, I think that it was like one of the most, if not the most beautifully shot movie. It feels like it tried to do the thing Eternals it, did with like making cinematography kind of a big uh, cornerstone for it. But it did it better than Eternals did. Um Sound, music, sound engineering was all like A1. That's never yeah. the issue with Marvel movies, though, I don't think. But I, it is worth mentioning that I think that the, the, the soundtrack and sound design and just the look, feel was all... It might be the best that any Marvel movie has ever looked. It kind of has the best tone, I guess. Um, soundtrack was one of the big positives for me. I thought the soundtrack was stellar. It, was incredible like even the original soundtrack even stuff that you know that like songs they brought in i, I mean really just yep. really really good uh i thought that i agree with you i think the cgi was bad i actually am i feel meaner about it than you do like i think i had seen before watching this someone say oh, and they said surprise. this honestly on like a, a f <laughs> on like a film group i was following Again, not in a dig like they, they were being sincere and they said, I think that um, MCU needs to just stop making movies for a few years and let CGI technology sort of like catch up and then sort of come back because it just sort of feels like they're using the same tech 
that they've been using for like eight, nine years. And it's just not looking good. Like with every movie, you kind of see it aging more and more. Yeah. I don't know what, if there's any truth to that, but I do know that as these movies go on, they look more and more silly to me. I think that there's this crazy divide between how excellent the actual outfits look, the real like linen outfits, those, the care, the design of those uh, was incredible, impeccable. And then the actual like superhero suits looked laughably bad to me. Like Ironheart <laughs> looked like something out of an episode of Power Rangers. Um, I can't remember. Uh, Okoye gets some suit. I can't remember what they called it. Yeah. Awful. Just, Midnight just really something. looks terrible. Yeah. I agree that um, I forget the actress's name, but she plays the queen. She was um, immense. She Angela was great. Bassett. She um, was really good in this movie like incredible i remember seeing i don't know if she got nominated for an academy award or if people were just saying she got snubbed for one and i had read that earlier and the, the like persnickety person in me is like oh for a, a marvel movie and then i watched this and i went like no like that that's a valid stance yeah. like that she really did kill it she played the part of a grieving mother very well yeah well there's um, the scene uh there's the scene where she's it's in the trailer and they we, we saw it ad nauseum and it was very emotional in the trailer where she's like, have I not given everything? And I thought, there's no way that's going to hit me as hard when I saw the movie. And because of the context of the scene, yeah. it hit so hard. I was, that's what I, I was like. I agree. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, she is killing this movie right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, beyond that, I actually, I, I don't think, I don't think I did like what it had to say about grief. I don't think it had said a whole lot about grief. Um, like, I, I was excited in the opening scene when you see Shuri and she sort of gets the news that her brother's dead and I, you know, not for no reason. I like stories about sibling loss. It kind of like, I understand why it sort of takes a backseat to things like objectively losing a parent before their time, losing a kid before their time. Those are objectively worse things to go through. And so generally in drama, those kind of get the front seat. Those get the most attention. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of stories told about sibling loss, which is something that I've gone through. So I kind of went like, Oh, Maybe this is really going to say something about uh, about that. And I feel like a lot of the movie, she shows this anger, you know, the anger that I felt in the first couple years. Um, and then it just felt like for no reason at all, she just did the right thing in the end. I know I'm kind of getting into like, yeah. deep, you know, like deep cuts now. It just, yeah. just sort of like at the last minute, I, dude, I loved when she was fighting. What's his name? Namor, Namor, whatever. Yeah. And um he uh he like gets up and he has the ship behind her and she's just has this rage she just goes wakanda forever and just fucking blows up the ship and i thought that was gonna be it she's gonna kill him i'm like that's awesome that's sad like she let the rage of her you know like lost consumer and i'm not saying it had to end on a bad note like i'm not saying it had to end in tragedy i just don't think it was a realistic it found a realistic way to her finding peace like it just suddenly in the end she was like okay, I want to be more like my brother, so I'm going to do the right now, thing. I 1,000% like, agree with yeah. you because one of my bigger problems with the film is that, uh, the st like, I know that the storylines are usually predictable. I mean, we've all read a fucking comic book. Like, we know these are superhero stories. They have a specific arc. But as soon as she saw Killmonger, again, heavy spoilers, uh, she saw Killmonger instead of her family, and, like, you, you know, we knew the anger and the rage she was dealing with, and she's like... I don't want to, I'm going to kill him. I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to fucking, yeah, yeah. at the last minute, you're going to be like, I got to do the right thing. And it's going to, and that's exactly, it was just very predictable. I agree. I don't think they found a good way for her to get there. It just felt like, uh, well, she saw some shit and fuck it. She's not going to kill him. Like, it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that Namor was a good enough villain. Um, or I guess antagonist is a better word for it. I think yeah. that the, the, the people Atlanteans, I guess they're, I don't know what they're, they're, they're called as a people, but yeah, I don't when know. they're out of the water, they looked really bad to me. Like it, it was like the first time they're on the bridge and they jump out of the water. I was like, Oh my fucking God. It really looked exceptionally terrible. Um, I made so many bad avatar jokes while watching this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's, you know, like, again, I feel like a part of me is judging it based on the, series that i'm just getting tired of i feel like if i saw it like i said a couple years ago i would have liked it more than i did um but 
I mean, it had flaws overall. I'm glad I watched it. It was, it was, it was an enjoyable movie, but I agree. It went on about 45 minutes longer than it really had any right to. It just felt like it was long for the sake of length at some point, but um, no, it was, it was good though. Or it was, it was fine. uh, I'll say that it was a fine movie. I don't necessarily think that the movie. Why? I, yeah, I don't, I agree with you. I don't think the movie said anything really important about grief. I just liked the way that they handled his passing. I thought it was very respectful. Um, oh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, you know, teared up a few times just at the knowledge of losing him. And I don't even know why, because it's, it's not like he wasn't, he wasn't Robin Williams to me. It's something yeah. about the way that he passed. And I don't want to say noble because hiding your illness from people is not always the most noble thing to do, but mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know why it gets me so much. Like they, they had the cold intro, which Marvel films don't typically do. I think the last time they did that was like Endgame. Usually it's the Marvel, the Marvel fanfare right away. They did the cold open yeah. where she loses him. Uh, it looks like they had, they just adopted that he had can't, they didn't say cancer, but they said illness. Um, mm-hmm. and she's trying to save him. And then the fanfare comes in and it's, it's just all shots of him. And it like, it really got me. Yeah, I, like immediately, I was, there was, I was no like, music oh. too. I think that yeah. made it so much better that it was it was it silent. Was, it was so somber, and it immediately I was like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna cry." And I didn't cry right away, but you know, it got up in my throat, and that's what she said. And um, a couple <laughs> times throughout the movie, you know, when she's at the river talking to her mom, and by the way, great callback by Namor when he was like, "I heard you at the river. You said you wanted to burn the world, so why don't you do it by my side?" Mm-hmm. Great antagonist moment. Uh, and then, you know, towards the end, I thought, you know, they, they do like the, the reveal in the post credits. There's no post credit scene connecting this to another film. I thought that was a nice classy touch. There's just a po- the post credit scene is just the reveal that he had a son with Nakia. And mm-hmm. that little kid was adorable. He was a fucking yeah. super adorable little dude. And him just, uh, you know, she was like, again, it, fu- it fucking choked me up. She was like, what's your name and they're like Tucson and then it's like what's your uh Wakanda name and he was like T'Challa son of King T'Challa and I was like oh my god he's fucking yeah uh, it, yeah I don't know why it got me but it really got me um no that it, it, for me too and then especially when they did again she when she has her mom, moment where she's grieving and actually properly mourning with her eyes closed and again no music no sound it's just and I thought it was the whole time I'm like I had this fear that they were going to parade around his corpse, you know, like make a yeah. uh, CGI person of his likeness or something. And the fact that they just use footage from other, the movies, I know it's like, all right, kind of setting the bar low for Disney, but like we've seen them do worse. We know what they're capable of right. and they didn't do it. And I'm happy they didn't. It also made it more meaningful for us, for the viewer, because we've seen him literally in those scenes before. So it was just kind of like, Oof, like it, it stung. And again, yeah. there's just something about, not having this somber music, like telling you how to feel. It's just blank. It's just void. You're, you're, you're having a reflective moment with her. And I don't know. I, I thought that that was really well done. And then of course the uh, segment of the, the, the cloth burning uh, for yeah. the credits was very, very nice. I'm going to point out something very weird that for some reason resonates with me ab- above a lot of other things. And this is strange because one, I'm not even, I'm not even a huge black Panther fan. Um, at a base level, like the hero was always just okay in my book. Uh, but it, it's a testament to Chadwick Boseman. It was such a silly thing, but in the in Avengers: Infinity War and Endgame, when he's chanting to the troops and he's like Ibambe, and they ch- there's something so incredibly powerful in that to me. And whenever mm-hmm. I hear him do it, um, post his death, post mortem, post. I don't is that what you call it post whatever and any, post-mortem, anytime post-mortem. I hear it now it like chokes me the fuck up and, and sure he did it in this movie and I was like not quite hitting as hard as yeah. hearing Chadwick <laughs> and I don't know what it is but something about he just I don't know just hearing that fucking chant I'm like I want to fuck I want to can I can I fight with you guys uh okay yeah. I have a couple <laughs> I'm I have a couple <laughs> I'm on my way taking the first flight I have like two quick notes one is that and I don't know what they're called because they are basically Atlanteans in Marvel continuity proper. Like Namor, he's Namor the Submariner. They're basically the the denizens of Atlantis and the Atlanteans, which which I guess they didn't want to do because Aquaman. I mean, they are mirror images of themselves yeah. on DC Marvel. 
Uh, but I, I really, really liked that they decided to give uh, Namor this Mayan heritage. And I thought that that was a cool mm-hmm. touch. And they call the city Talokan or Talokan. So I, I assume, I don't know what you would call them, those people. But the first scene when they're introduced where it's almost like a horror scene, when you just see like heads popping out of the dark ocean at night and they go down to investigate this rig and all of a sudden the power shuts out and I immediately was consumed with horror at the thought of being at the bottom of the ocean and it just all you all your power gets lost and it's pitch black. Yeah. That's terrifying to me. And I thought the intro to to their their people was really cool. I really liked that scene. I thought it was very cool. I said cool way too many times there. I'm going to say um excellent instead. The other thing Say cool one more time. Cool 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 cool. Uh the other <laughs> thing I really liked although I agree with you that her suit of armor looked like a Gundam fucked a Power Ranger and I was not on board with the design. I really liked the introduction to the character of Riri Williams when it was a Koye, uh, Riri and Shuri. They had such great chemistry in her dorm room, the back and forth. I didn't even like even the Marvel, the Marvel banter TM I thought was charming when she's like, I told her not to come. And she's like, you like, she's like, you stand the fuck out. Uh, Okoye had some cool fight scenes early on. She kind of disappears halfway through and yeah. then goes in that dumb suit at the end. But uh, her her fight scenes early on, especially when the uh, Talakan Talakanians, I don't know what you call them, the Avatar people, <laughs> when they show yeah. up on the bridge and she, she and she fights them off. Uh, so she has some really cool fucking moments. Uh, I love yeah. Dana Guerrera and uh, she knocked it out of the fucking park. Uh, that's all I had about Black Panther. I'm done. Me too. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Let's do All the right. thing. Let's move on Last to the next thing. I specifically did not even ask you to tell me when you had finished watching this. I have no idea how you felt about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I made Derek watch a DC animated film called Superman vs. the Elite. You guys already know that I liked it and we'll talk about it more. I want to know how you liked it. I want to know how you liked it. How'd you, did you like it? Did you hate it? How did you feel? So I I liked it more than Black Panther. I can tell you that much. Here's let me get well, a, let me get out of the thing. way what I didn't like about it. I know what you not didn't necessarily like. t- t- hit me hit me with it. It was the big bug that they fought. <laughs> no, I didn't mind. Because on re- bug, although it was oh, okay. a little, it was on a rewatch, weird. I was like, this is cheesy. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little it was a little little crazy. Um, but, but uh, no, that's 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 fine. What I don't like about this is not necessarily what I don't like about this, but it's what I don't like about a lot of uh, stories that are about conflicting ideologies. And that's that the writer um, ultimately favors one over the other. And so if your whole point of your story is to have two ideologies that are similar but different enough and to see which one kind of comes out on top, they have to stay on equal ground the entire time in order for that like writing. Like the question has to be answered by the viewer. And so the thing that kind of irks me is that they pretend that, uh, oh, I forget their name, the, the Elite, duh, it's right in the fucking title. Yeah. They pretend that the Elite are the good guys and Superman is the good guy in just two different ways. And then at the very end, they just pull the fucking rug out from under and go, oh, actually, the Elite, the elite are evil. They think power dominates and they want to be in charge and blah, blah, blah. So that to me was a little annoying because I'm like, I know you're you presenting mean. this idea. You're doing a thing where you're like challenging uh, what superhero movies have, you know, represented for so long. And then you're just going, just kidding. One was evil the whole time. They're not both good in different ways. One's just evil. And now we have to beat the evil. It's like, okay. That being said, um, I, I really liked it. I like put it on. And I saw the animation. Something about it turned me off initially. Like it's a little weird. Superman yeah. is just like fucking uh, no pun intended cartoonishly gigantic he's like 19 it's a brick feet shit tall. house yeah yeah um but no i actually ended up just like 15 minutes in really liking it. i kind of like got the trajectory of what it was going for and it was cool to see it unfold um for, for the listeners uh the elite mm-hmm. are a group of people i forget almost all of their names who essentially <laughs> are like fledgling superheroes <laughs> Uh, Manchester Black, I think was the, or is it Black yeah, Manchester? One of those. No, it's Manchester Black. Uh, Manchester Black. And they call him Chester or Chess. Um, they're a fledgling group of young superheroes who come onto the scene 
And essentially, the movie opens up with Superman beating a bad guy, and he has a chance to kill him, but he throws him in jail. Uh, and then these people, uh, the elite, are essentially people who go, well, then they just break out of jail, and then they just cause all this damage, and they hurt people again. And so, doesn't it make more sense to just kill them, and then you get rid of, you get rid of the, the evil altogether? We've talked about this on the show numerous times with the Snyderverse. Um, and so... Uh, it's basically like what we were talking about last week with Superman. He's such an he's such a physically unstoppable force that really the only way to stop him is by like demoralizing him or um uh what's the term I'm looking for? Like challenging his philosophy. And so that's what this movie's yeah. about. Is basically saying like your way is the old way, and maybe that's not what's good for the world anymore. Um yeah. Again, ultimately, in the end, I, I, I really liked the movie, so I'm not like, in the end, it sucked. That's not what I'm saying. I was a little bummed of the, it just felt like not an honest representation of the two ideas for them right. to literally just become evil in the third act. Well, you um, know why? And you literally just gave me an epiphany. The reason that is if they took that answer to the logical conclusion, not only does it get much more adult in the answer, it, yeah. it basically, it's Watchmen, right? It's it's Dr. Yeah, Manhattan yeah, yeah. killing Rorschach in the snow because it's the it's the lesser of two evils. Like, I, I literally just thought about that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I actually watch. I'm, was so I'm, good. Uh, in closing, it is really good. Uh, you sent this to me to sort of provide context before context context before watching a quote from Alan Moore. Um and I think this is an interesting way of looking at Superman. I'm going to read through this. I'm reading it directly from my phone. So sorry for my cadence uh, listeners. The Superman myth is a story about greatness and wish fulfillment. All superhero legends are based on this concept. Superman is the sun that all others revolve around. The story is a representation of an alien being who comes to Earth and just so happens to blend in among humans while using his unique abilities not to rise above us, but to help us. He cannot be a god because gods are dictators who set rules for others to follow. Superman sets rules for himself and uses those rules for our benefit. The myth was perfected from the 1950s to the roughly 1970s on the pencil, under the pencil of severe talent, Kurt Swan. If America has a legend, this is the part I really liked. If America has a legend comparable to the ageless myths of antiquity, there's Superman. Um, what my criticism of Superman has always been the same criticism. Everybody else's criticism of Superman. He's too big. He's too, he's just too strong. And like now ha having that sort of like bringing that context into this film. And even though it didn't kind of unfold in the way I would have liked it to, and you're right, it would have turned into Watchmen. It would have been too real. Um, I'm kind of like more interested in Superman than I've ever been in my life at this point. Like just the fact that he's the whole idea is that he is the most I righteous like I did this. and good and perfect, you know, like example at the center of this huge, fucking like network of superheroes that we've turned into today like he's the ideal thing and so when you attack that ideal i don't know there's just like there's just a lot of groundwork to do some cool shit with that so now i'm more excited for this superman movie coming up which i think was the whole point of watching this was again to provide i think you're just like psychologically just pulling me this way and that just very subtly to prime mm -hmm. me for this new era of superman and i feel primed yeah L lastly though I really just want you to recommend uh, another DC. We, we don't even need to have to talk about it on the podcast. I just want to watch more of them, but I want to watch a good one. I don't want to like okay. pick one and it ends up being a stinker. And then I'm like, just discouraged yeah. from watching any more of that. I, when I you went have to, to think one on Super the spot, just let me know. Sure. When I went to look up Superman versus the elite and figure out where it was streaming, I saw all star, all star Superman, which is on HBO max. Uh, and it's a good story, but I think you're better off um, reading the comics for that one. So I'll yeah. think of another one that I think is a good story uh, and potentially a good Superman story. I, I got to tell you, uh, you watching this, this is exactly uh, what I hoped and dreamed would happen, which was that you, because <laughs> again, I, I know they're not, they're not perfect films, but they're pretty enjoyable. And I think they do a good job of providing some context. Um, I had never looked at the like cop out of them just ultimately being the bad guy. And I actually, I fully agree with that criticism. I think it's super fair. You're like, you're like, no, there's a valid question to be had here. Is your way outdated? Does nobody want it? You have people who are going, look, I like Superman, but this guy is this is the third time he's come back to to break the fucking city apart. Uh, and I, it's, it's sort of a cop out because they don't really answer the question 
they they just go, oh, these guys are a little bit of damaged goods anyway, so their way is not going to... That's why they're like that, basically. Um, but I do really love the idea that, like, yeah, Superman it can be a little cheesy because of his, like, no, justice, the truth, justice, the American way. Like, his philosophy is what you would consider antiquated, but I do really love the idea that he's... He's just, he's the ideal. He's supposed to be there to show us that we can be better. Like we can mm -hmm. be better people where he's, he's optimism incarnate. He is, he is the guiding light to which, uh, you know, he's the guiding light to which all ships, uh, follow. He's, he's supposed to be the North star. And I, I, it, there's something like romantic in that concept. Um, mm -hmm. and I, and I know like unbridled optimism can be naive, naivety, naivete. Uh, but I, I just, there's something really romantic in that concept uh if you can put aside some of the silly disbelief of superhero storytelling and get to the bottom of it and which is why like i've never been a self-prescribed superman fan but over the years have gotten a much deeper appreciation for the character of superman um and i would be mm -hmm. happy happy derek to find you another film to watch uh <laughs> la, 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 da, da. did i have anything else to add i don't think that i did i'm happy that you liked it Really? Yeah, I, I liked my, it a lot. It makes my I liked uh, it more than Black Panther too, <laughs> and my heart full. Uh, not in that order, because you can't have blood in both places at once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Chris. Have, yeah. Hey, Derek. We have we have an announcement to make here. We have a bit of an announcement. We did a little thing a couple a couple weeks ago called the I Cynical Stream. We is. started it up. We played a game called Dead Space Three. We didn't like it very much, but we had a good time playing it because we always like hanging out. And ever since, we've kind of been in limbo. I got surgery. There's all this shit going on. But hey, I'm back at work. I'm feeling better. Our okay. schedules are kind of uh, getting back on schedule. And so we made this decision on a game. And we did. since you were sort of the, the, the narrator, mediator, I'd like you to announce what game that is. And, and then we can post it on Twitter. That beautiful okay. image that you made last night. And, uh, and hopefully, if all goes well, we're going to be doing it this Saturday. Chris, take it away. Yeah. The narrator, if you will. Uh, we are going to be playing. So we, uh, Derek and I have very fond memories of playing It Takes Two together from Hayes Live Studios. And Straight in that off. vein, Derek, somebody suck me. Uh, in that vein, Derek recommended another cooperative game from Hayes Live Studios. If you know their game history then you probably know the answer it's going to be a way out which is a cooperative uh, cooperative uh, story about uh, two inmates i guess trying to break out of prison i really don't know much about it i remember when it came out and i remember it getting pretty decent reviews but i never touched it and i'm excited i'm really excited to so get my first prison tattoo and yeah fuck some butts <laughs> Yeah. In and out Am of I prison. Am I going to be the sucker or the sucky? I don't know. Uh, but if you play your cards right, both. Oh. Yeah, we're so going to... So in that vein, I... Uh, sorry, please. Please, take it away, Chris. Oh, and well, you were going to say in that vein, and we were just talking about sucking, so it goes hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was just going to go on to say, you know, so, you know, we're going to start that hopefully this Saturday, if not the Saturday after. Uh, really just depends yeah. on real life stuffs, but uh, what were you going to tag on there? No, just that I um uh I started to watch like a trailer for it and um I turned it off after I kind of got the general gist because I don't want to have any spoilers of course. I want to go in surprised. We went mm -hmm. into it takes two pretty blind so I'd like to do it again the oh, same yeah. way. But it seems like it's um from what the trailer said, pretty open-ended game. Like you can kind of like it's not just like oh here's the one way to do this part. There's a whole bunch of different shit. You can smack yeah. somebody's butt and blame it on someone else. And then while they're getting in a fight, I can hit the button that gets you through the door. And Or oh, we can do nice. it a completely different way. Like you can jump in a, a thing of dirty laundry and I can push you through the thing. Like there's all kinds of, seems like it's kind of play the way you want to play. I like thing. that. I'm very excited is what I'm getting at. I'm really, really yeah. excited for this. That sounds really cool. So we'll make the uh, official launch date of the, we both bought the game already. We're ready to go. We'll make the official launch date. Uh, public on Twitter later this week. If it's going to be Saturday, we'll let you know for sure. And that's all. Derek, where could everybody find you at so they know where to go? 
Uh, they could find me on Twitch and Twitter. I haven't been on Twitch much, but I do plan on getting back into that. Like I said, getting back into the flow of having a normal schedule and, um, uh, I miss it. I miss having fun. I miss, I miss, uh, playing vidyas. Um, and I'd like to play more than just uh, sincerely, sincerely. I'd like to play more than just, um, on Saturdays when we do the TCS, the cynical stream. So you can find me on Twitch and Twitter. At Dr. Gleam MD. That's D R G L O L M M D's. Nuts in your butts. Where can they find you, Christopher? <laughs> you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at uh, Crispy Mana or Mana. I'm beating you to it. I'm taking away your satisfaction. C R I S P Y M A N A. Again, I tweet mostly out of the Cynical Nerd account, but that's okay. You can come uh, look at our stuff and tell us, I don't know, say hi. Give us a follow. Say hey. Yeah, say, say how you doing. Hit me up. Hashtag ask TCN for a question or hashtag fuck TCN. I didn't, I'm like, he hasn't come up here yet. He's, he's going to, I'm one of these days, one of these days I'm going to be like, oh yeah, well hashtag fuck. And I'm just going to see his head pop up. Be like, like, what a fucking cunt. And he's going to be right next yeah. to you. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> earlier today, I forget why, but I mean, this is a pretty common occurrence in the Reed house. I quoted, uh, I quoted the famous song and I said, you don't, uh, well, I'm fucking it up now, but uh, I don't want none unless you got buns, hun. And I just sang it just because I thought it was funny. And all of a sudden, Grayson goes, buns, hun. And I was like, shit. Uh oh. <laughs> that, that, that's not that b bad in and of itself, no. but uh, things, things like that. Anyway, uh, let's get the fuck out of here. I'll see you next week. I love you very much. And I love you. You look great. Uh, we'll, we'll talk later. All right. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.